And here we are, dear viewer, the final scene of the final act. Act 5, scene 3 of Romeo and Juliet. Here's the translation. Starts off in the churchyard, but rather than Romeo, who we might expect to see, here's Paris and his page, his sermon. And he says, Give me thy torch, boy, hence and stand aloof. Yet put it out, for I would not be seen. Under yonder yew trees, they all lay thee all along, holding thine ear close to the hollow ground. So shall no foot upon the churchyard tread, being loose and firm with digging up of graves. But thou shalt hear it. Whistle, then to me is signal that thou hearest something approach. Give me those flowers. Do as I bid thee. Go. So Paris says, give me that torch. Stand away from me. Actually, put the torch out. I don't want to be seen. Wait under those trees over there and listen out carefully. And if you hear anybody coming, give me a message of a whistle, because I don't want anybody here. And uh, give me those flowers. And the page responds, I am almost afraid to stand alone here in the churchyard. Yes, I will adventure. So he says, you know, I'm scared to do this, but I will. Paris says, sweet flower, with flowers thy bridal bed I strew. So he's throwing flowers onto the, uh, the tomb, the, the sort of the dead body of uh, Juliet. O oh, woe, thy canopy is dust and stones, which with sweet water nightly I will dew. Or wanting that, with tears distilled by moans, the obsequies that I for thee will keep nightly shall be to strew thy grave and weep. So he's basically saying, sweet flower, I'm going to cover your grave with flowers. Where you lay is dust and stones. I'll water your flowers with tears, or if not, with tears and cries, my habit every night will be to put flowers on your grave. So it seems that um, Paris really did love Juliet. And then the page whistles, which of course is a warning that someone's coming. And Paris says, the boy gives warning, something doth approach. What cursed foot wanders this way tonight, to cross my obsequies and true love's right? What with a torch, muffle me night a while? So he's saying, oh, someone's coming. Who could it be? And he sees that someone's approaching with a light, a torch, and he says, I'll hide in the dark and see who it is. Enter Romeo and Balthazar with a torch mattock and axe. And Romeo says, give me that mattock and the wrenching iron. Hold, take this letter early in the morning. See thou deliver it to my lord and father. Give me the light upon thy life, I charge thee. Whatever thou hearest or see, stand all aloof and do not interrupt me in my course. Why I descend into this bed of death is partly to behold my lady's face, but chiefly to take thence from her dead finger a precious ring, a ring that I must use in dear employment. Therefore, hence be gone. But if thou, jealous, dost return to pry in what I further shall intend to do, by heaven I will tear thee joint by joint and strew this hungry churchyard with thy limbs. The time and my intents are savage wild, more fierce and more inexorable, far than empty tigers on the roaring sea, or all the roaring sea, not tigers on the roaring sea. So he's saying to Balthazar, give me that axe, give me that crowbar, take this letter tomorrow morning, give it to my mum and dad. So it's probably a, a sort of suicide note, isn't it? And he says, uh, give me the light. And he says, whatever happens, don't come near me. And he says, uh, I'm going in here to see Juliet's face, but also to take a ring from her finger, an important ring. But if you're curious about what I'm doing, don't you dare come back and look at me and disturb me because I am in a really bad mood and I will tear you apart and put your body parts all over the churchyard. This is a wild time and I'm feeling wild, more fierce and impossible to persuade than hungry tigers or the wild sea. Balthazar at this point is probably thinking, wow, if that's how you treat your friends. But Balthazar says, I will be gone, sir, and not trouble you. So, okay, I'll go and I will come back. And Romeo says, so shalt thou show me friendship. Take thou that. Live and be prosperous and farewell, good fellow. So he says, look, if you do that, then you're a good friend. Here, have some money, have a good life. Balthazar says, all for, the same, for all this same, I'll hide me hereabout. His looks I fear and his intents I doubt. So he basically says, all the same, I'm going to hide somewhere. I am worried about uh, Romeo. He looks, um, you know, in a bad way. And I'm pretty sure that he's lying. You know, I, I'm, uh, you know, looking... Uh, I'm going to stay and just see what happens. And then he retires, meaning he um, he goes away. And he's, uh, Romeo says, Thou detestable more, thou womb of death. So he's criticising the, the tomb, gorged with the, the 
dearest morsel of the earth, as I enforce thy rotten jaws to open, and in despite I'll cram thee with more food. So he says, you know what, you et up the most precious thing on earth to me. I'll break open your jaws and I'll give you more to eat. In other words, you can eat me. And he opens the tomb. Now Paris notices this is Romeo, says, this is that banished haughty Montague that murdered my love's cousin, with which grief it is supposed the fair creature died. And here is come to do some villainous shame to the dead bodies. I will apprehend him. So basically he's saying, well, here's Romeo. And it's said that Juliet died because she was so upset about Tybalt and who Romeo killed. He's come to do something nasty to the bodies. I will go and get him. And he comes forward, he says, stop. Thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague, can vengeance be pursued further than death? Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee, obey and go with me, for thou must die. So he basically says, stop the evil actions. How can your revenge go any further than death? Stop, come with me, you must die. Well, Romeo doesn't argue with that. He says, I must indeed, and therefore came I. So yeah, you know, I, I must die. That's why I'm here, to die. Um... And he says, good gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Fly hence and leave me, think upon these gone. Let them affright thee, I beseech thee, youth. Put not another sin upon my head, by urging me to fury, O oh, be gone. By heaven I love thee better than myself, for I came, I come hither armed against myself. Stay not, be gone, live, and hereafter say, a madman's mercy bade thee run away. So what he's basically saying is, um, you know, don't wind me up and make me do something, another bad thing. Uh, look at all these dead people here. Look at Tybalt, who I call. Let that be killed. Let that be a warning to you. And he's saying, I beg you, don't add another crime to my list by making me mad. Just go. I promise I love you more than I love myself. And I've come here to kill myself. So don't stay. Be gone. Live. And later you can say that... The sword of a madman made you run away. If I was Paris there, I think I would have gone, uh, okay. But Paris doesn't. He says, I do defy thy conjurations and apprehend thee for a felon here. He says, I won't do as you ask. I'm arresting you as a criminal. And Romeo says, will thou provoke me? Then have at thee, boy. So are you going to wind me up to fight? Okay, let's have it. And they fight. Now the page says, oh Lord, they fight. I will go call the watch. So in other words, they're fighting, I'll, I'll call the law. And Paris says, oh, I am slain, I'm dead. It seems that Romeo kills him. If thou be merciful, open the tomb and lay me with Juliet. So, you know, show me mercy and put my body next to Juliet. And then Paris dies. Now, that might come as a shock to those of you who've watched the Zeffirelli film or the Baz Luhrmann film, because they don't have Paris dying at the hands of Romeo in either film. Bizarrely. Romeo says, In faith I will, let me peruse this face. Mercutio's kinsman, noble pa county Paris. What said my man when he betossed, when my betossed soul did not attend him as we rode? I think he told me Paris should have married Juliet, said he not so? Or did I dream it so, or am I mad hearing him talk of Juliet to think it was so? Oh, give me the, my thy hand, one writ with me in sour misfortune's book. So... Romeo's saying, I will put your body with Juliet. And then he's saying, you know, Paris is a good man, Mercutio's relative. And I seem to remember my friend told me that Paris was going to marry Juliet. Is that true or did I just dream it? Am I going mad? And then he says, oh, just like me, Paris, you've had some really bad luck. So um, I'll bury thee in a triumphant grave. A grave, oh no, a lantern slaughtered youth. For here lies Juliet and her beauty makes this vault of feasting presence full of light. Death, lie thou there by a dead man interred. So he's saying, I'll bury you in an amazing grave. And then he says, this is Juliet's tomb and her beauty makes this place, a be uh, this vault a place of beauty and light. Dead men lie there with other dead men. And he lays Paris down in the tomb. How oft when men are at the point of death have they been merry, which their keepers call a lightning before death. Oh, how may I call this a lightning? O oh, my love, my wife, death that hath sucked the honey of thy breath, had not ha hath had no power yet upon thy beauty. Thou art not conquered, beauty's ensign, yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks, and death's pale flag is not advanced there. So he's saying, isn't it funny how men, when they're near death, quite often feel happy. They call that a lightness before death, but how can I call this lightning? 
my love, my wife, and then he's looking at the, the dead, or supposedly dead body of Juliet, but of course she's not dead, and says, death which has sucked from the beauty from you has no power over your looks. You are not defeated, but you still look pretty. Your cheeks and lips are still red. Death has not made you pale, and it almost seems like he's working out exactly the reality of the situation here, that Juliet isn't dead. Then he looks over and sees where the dead body of Tybalt is and says, Tybalt lies thou there in thy bloody sheet. Oh, what more favour can I do to thee than with that hand that cut thy youth in twain to sunder his that was thine enemy? So he's saying, the best thing I can do for you, Tybalt, is kill the one who killed you, i.e. myself. Forgive me, cousin. Ah, dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous and that the lean, abhorred monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I still will stay with thee and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here, here will I remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-wearied flesh. Eyes look your last, arms take your last embrace. So basically what he's saying, he's saying, you know, forgive me, Juliet. And then he sort of says, why are you still so pretty? And he's, he guesses, well, is death in love with you? And he's going to sort of keep you here as his girlfriend. And he says, well, I'll protect you. I'll stay with you now from this moment onwards. And I'll never leave again. Like the worms that are going to crawl into your dead body, I will stay here forever with you and forget the bad luck which has worn me down. He says, eyes take your last look, arms take your last hug. So he gives her a bit of a hug. He says, lips. Uh, he says, lips. Oh, the doors of breath, seal with a righteous kiss. So he gives her one last kiss. A dateless bargain to engrossing death. Come, bitter conduct, come and savoury guide. Thou desperate pilot, now at once run on the dashing rocks, thy seasick, weary bark. Here's to love, drinks. O oh, true apothecary, thy drugs are quick, thus with a kiss I die. So basically he says, you know, come bitter conduct, unsavoury guide. Desperate sailor, pushed onto the rocks in your tired ship. Here's to Juliet, and he drinks. He says, well, the medicine man was right, this poison is quick. And with a kiss I die. And Romeo, our hero, dies. A little bit too late, at the other end of the churchyard, Friar Lawrence comes in. And he says, St. Francis be my speed, how oft tonight have my old feet stumbled at graves. Who's there? So he's saying, oh, I wish I could have come faster, but I keep tripping over these graves. <laughs> Who's there? And it's Balthazar. Balthazar says, here's one, a friend. So, you know, I'm here. I'm your friend. And, um... The friend of one that knows you well. And Friar Lawrence says, Bliss be upon you, tell me, my good friend, what torches yon that vainly lends his light to grubs and eyeless skulls as I discern it burneth in the couple's monument. So he's saying, Oh, blessings be on you. Tell me, what light is that over there in the distance that lights up worms and skulls? It seems to be burning in Capulet's tomb. Arthur says, It doth so, holy sir, and there's my master, one that you love. He says, Yep, yeah, that's right, it is in Capulet's tomb. And my boss is in there, one that you care about. And Friar Lawrence asks, who is it? And Balthazar says, Romeo. Friar Lawrence says, how long has he been there? Balthazar says, full half an hour. Friar Lawrence says, go with me to the vault. Come with me. And Balthazar says, I dare not, sir. My master knows not, but I am gone hence. So he thinks, you know, I'm not going. And Romeo thinks I'm gone. And fearfully did menace me with death if I did stay to look on at his intents. In other words... You know, I'm not going back. He said he'd kill me if I did. The Friar Lawrence says, well, stay then. I'll go alone. Fear comes upon me. Oh, much. I fear some ill, unlucky thing. So he said, I'll go by myself, but I'm afraid something bad is happening here. Balthazar says, as I did sleep under this yew tree here, I dreamt my master and another fought, and my master slew him. So Balthazar has fallen asleep in the previous two and a half minutes. And uh, says, I had a dream. Romeo was fighting someone and Romeo killed him. Of course, that dream comes true. Friar Lawrence shouts, Romeo, and advances. And as he walks into the, the monument, he sees blood. He says, alack, alack, what blood is this which stains the stony entrance of the sepulchre? 
What means these masterless and gory swords to lie discoloured by this place of peace? So he's saying, oh no, what are these blood stains? What does it mean that there are bloody swords here in a, a grave, a place of peace? And he enters the tomb and he sees Romeo. He says, Romeo, oh, pale. Who else? What, Paris? So he sees, you know, Romeo is dead. He sees that Paris is dead. Paris too, and steeped in blood. Ah, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. The lady stirs. So he basically sees that uh, Romeo and Paris are dead. But before he has a chance to even think, what am I going to do? Juliet starts waking up. This is a great piece of writing by Shakespeare to have it, you know, before any decision can be made. Here's Juliet waking up, yawning with, oh, comfortable friar, where is my lord? I do remember where. Well, where I should be, and there I am. Where is my Romeo? So in other words, oh, friar, I'm in the right place, but Romeo's not here. Where is he? And there's a noise, someone's coming, and the friar says, I hear some noise, lady, come from that nest of death, contagion, and unnatural sleep, a greater power than we can contradict, hath thwarted our intents. Come, come away, thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead, and Paris too. Come, I'll dispose of thee among a sisterhood of holy nuns. Stay not to question, for the watch is coming. So the friar says, look, we've got to get out of here. I'm going to hide you with some nuns, but we can't stay here, because else the law are going to get you. Look. A greater power than ours has ruined everything. Romeo is dead. Paris is dead. Come on, let's go. Which, you know, at least he didn't sugarcoat it. Come on, good Juliet. And there's more noise. I dare no, not stay longer. So, you know, even, um, even Lawrence here is saying, I'm afraid to hang about. We've got to go. And Juliet says, go get the heads for I will not away. Well, you go, but I'm not going. So Fire Lawrence doesn't argue. He goes. Juliet approaches Romeo's dead body and says, What's here? A cup closed in my true love's hand? Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. O oh, child, drunk all and left no friendly drop to help me after. I will kiss thy lips, how haply some poison yet doth hang on them to make me to make die with a restorative. Kisses him, thy lips are warm. So basically what's happening is Juliet finds the cup, held tight in, uh, held tight in Romeo's hand, she says, I can see it's poison that's killed him. How rude, he drank it all and left none for me. I'll kiss his lips and hopefully some poison will be on them to make me die too. So she kisses him and she notes that his lips are warm. And then the watch arrive, the, the law, the police. Lead boy, which way? Lead the way. Which way should we go? Juliet says, yay, noise, then I'll be brief. Oh, happy dagger. She picks up Romeo's dagger. She says, I've got to be quick because I can hear people are coming. She snatches his dagger. This is thy sheath, stabs herself. My body will sheath you. And she stabs herself. I analyse that, by the way, the, the two different types of death in my ebook. Pick it up, there's a link in the description. There rust and let me die, falls on Romeo's body and dies. Enter the watch with the page of Paris. So Juliet now dies, stabs herself to death, and in comes... Paris's page. This is the place then where the tall cloth burn. This is where all the light is. And the first watchman says, the ground is bloody. Search about the churchyard. Go, some of you, who, whoever you find, attach. Pitiful sight. Here lies the county slain, and Juliet bleeding, warm and newly dead, who here hath lain these two days buried. Go tell the prince, run to the Capulets, raise up the Montagues, some other search. We see the ground whereon these woes do lie, but the true ground of all these piteous woes we cannot without circumstance descry. So in other words, he's saying, well, there's blood everywhere. So anyone you see in the church, I'd arrest them. What an awful sight. Paris is dead. Juliet's dead. Even though she's supposed to be dead for two days, she's warm and newly dead. Go and get the prince. Run to the Capulets. Wake up the Montagues. Have everyone join in the search. We'll, we can see the effect of what's gone on here, but to find the cause of it, we need to investigate. Then the watch come back in with Balthazar. And the second watchman says, here's Romeo's man, we found him in the churchyard. So the watchman says, hold him in safety till the prince come hither. So keep hold of him until the prince gets here. And then in come the watch again with Friar Lawrence. And the third watchman says, here's a friar that trembles, sighs and weeps. We took this mattock and this spade from him as he was coming from this churchyard side. So here's a friar, he's really sad, he's really afraid. We took his axe and spade from him as he was walking along the churchyard. 
The first watchman says a great suspicion. Stay the friar, stay the friar too. So this is very suspicious. Hold on to the friar. And then comes the prince and says, What misadventure is so early up that calls our person from our morning's rest? So what crime is up so early that gets us all out of bed? And then in comes Capulet and Lady Capulet and some others. And Capulet says, What should it be that thou so shriek abroad? So what's causing everyone to cry so loudly? And Lady Capulet says, The people in the street cry Romeo, some Juliet, some Paris, and all run with open outcry toward our monument. So she's saying, you know, some people are shouting out about Romeo, some about Paris, some about Juliet, and everyone's coming here. The prince says, what fear is this which startles in our ears? So what terrible thing is everyone shouting about? And the first watchman says, sovereign, here lies the county Paris slain, and Romeo dead, and Juliet dead before warm and ki new killed. So summarises, Paris is killed, Romeo's dead, Juliet, although she's already a dead, is actually alive and killed again. The prince says, search, seek, and know how this foul murder comes. So let's investigate and work out what's going on. And the first watchman says, here is a friar and slaughtered Romeo's man with instruments upon them. So here's the friar and Romeo's friend, and they've got tools upon them meant to open these dead men's tombs. So they've got, you know, pickaxes and crowbars. They've obviously tried to break in. And Capulet says, Oh heavens, oh wife, look how our daughter bleeds. This dagger hath mistaken and for lo, his house is empty on the back of Montague and is missheathed in my daughter's bosom. So he's saying, oh wife, look how Juliet's bleeding. The knife's holder is empty on Romeo's back and it's stuck. The knife is stuck in Juliet's chest. Lady Capulet says, oh me, the sight of death is a bell that warns my old age to a sepulchre. So in other words, this sight is like a warning bell. It warns me my death is coming. And then Montague comes, Romeo's dad. Come, Montague, for thou art early up to see thy son and heir more early down. Here you are, look, about to see dead Romeo. And Montague says, Alas, my liege, my wife is dead tonight. Grief of my son's exile hath stopped her breath. What further woe conspires against mine age? So, in other words, my wife died tonight. So sad she was about Romeo's exile. How can it get any worse? What more trouble must I suffer? The prince says, look and thou shalt see. So take a look and you'll see what the problem is. Montague says, oh, thou untaught, what manners is in this to press before thy father to a grave? So he says, oh, Romeo, you're so rude. To die before your father is wrong. The prince says, seal up the mouth of outrage for a while till we can clear these ambiguities and know their spring, their head, their true descent. Then will I be general of your woes and lead you even to death. Meantime forbear and let mischance be slave to patience. Bring forth the parties of suspicion. So in other words, shut up until we've worked out what's happened here and then I'll be the one who makes you sad with my punishment. But until then, be patient. They bring in the people we suspect. And in comes Friar Lawrence. And he says, I am the greatest able to do least. You are most suspected at the time and place doth make against me of this direful murder. And here I stand both to impeach and to purge. In other words, I am the most um, suspicious person here, the, the biggest suspect, because I was here at the time and the place of this murder. Here I stand and you can question me. He says, myself condemned and myself excused. So I, I've judged myself and I've forgiven myself. The prince says, then say at once what thou dost know in this. So tell me right away what you know. And the friar sort of recaps what's happened and says, I will be brief for my short date of breath is not so long as is a tedious tale. So, you know, I'm not going to be long enough, alive long enough to tell you a boring story. He says, Romeo there dead was husband to that Juliet, and she there dead, that Romeo's faithful wife. I married them, and their stolen marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, whose untimely death banished the new-made bridegroom from the city, from whom, and not for Tybalt, Juliet pined. You, to remove that siege of grief from her, betrothed her, and would have her marry perforce to County Paris. Then comes she to me, and with wild looks bid me devise some means to rid her from this second marriage, or in my cell, there she would kill herself. Then gave I her, so tutored by my art, a sleeping potion, which so took effect as I intended, for it wrought on her the form of death. Meantime I writ to Romeo, that he should hither come at the dire night, 
to help to take her from her borrowed grave, being the time the potion being the time the potions for should cease, but he which bore my letter, Friar John, was stayed by accident, and yesternight returned my letter back. Then all alone at the prefixed hour of her waking came I to take her from the kindred's vault, meaning to keep her close to my cell till I conveniently could send to Romeo. But when I came, so minute ere the time of her waking, here ultimately lay the noble Paris and true Romeo dead. She wakes, and I entreated her come forth and bear this work of heaven with patience. But then a noise did scare me from the tomb, and she too desperate would not go with me, but as it seems did violence to herself. All this I know, and to the marriage her nurse is privy, and if aught in this miscarried by fault, let my old life be sacrificed some hour before this time unto the rigour of severest law. Now this is really just a recap. But basically the friar says, I'll say it quickly, because I won't be alive long enough to tell a long, boring story. Romeo, who lies there dead, was married to Juliet. Juliet, their dead, is Romeo's loving wife. I wed them together, and the day they married was the day that Tybalt died. His badly timed death meant Romeo was not allowed in the city. For Romeo and not Tybalt, Juliet cried. You, her parents, trying to take her sadness away, engaged her and would have her marry Paris. And then she came to see me. She asked me to come up with a plan to get her out of marrying Paris or said she would kill herself. I gave her, mixed with my skills, a sleeping potion which worked so well as I planned that it made her look dead. In the meantime, I wrote to Romeo to tell him to come here to tonight to take Juliet from here. But when she woke up, uh, when she woke up, but Friar John, who took my letter, was stopped by accident and last night gave me back my letter. Then all alone, at the time she was set to wake up, I came here to Juliet's tomb, meaning to take her back to my place until I could tell Romeo. But when I got here, just before Juliet woke up, here lay Paris and Romeo dead. She woke up, and I begged her to come with me and endure this tragic time with patience, but a noise scared me away, and she, too desperate, would not leave, but it seems killed herself. I know all this, and about the marriage her nurse knows, and if any of this is my fault, let my life be taken among the most severe law. And after giving this massive recap, the prince says, We still have known thee for a holy man. Where's Romeo's man? What can he say in this? So in other words, don't worry about it, uh, friar. We know you're a good man. Now where's Balthazar? Balthazar says, I brought my master news of Juliet's death. So I told Romeo that uh, Juliet was death, uh, dead, not death. And then in post he came from Mantua to this same place, to this same monument. So when I told him that, he came here this letter he early did bid me give his father and threaten me with death going in the vault i departed not and left him there so i said well you know he gave me a letter to take to his dad and going into the tomb he threatened to kill me if i didn't leave him alone the prince says give me the letter i'll look on it where is the county's page that raised the watch sirrah what made your master in this place so he says i'll have a look at that letter where's paris's page let's have a look why is paris here and the page said says, he came with flowers to strew the lady's grave and bid me stand aloof, and so I did. Anon comes one with light to open the tomb, and by and by my master drew on him. So, you know, okay, well, he came with flowers to put them on Juliet's grave, told me to leave him alone, but someone else came along. Paris ended up fighting him, and I ran to get help. The prince reads the letter and says, this letter doth make good the friar's words so in other words this letter backs up what the friars told us their course of love the tidings of her death and here he writes he did buy a poison of a poor apothecary and therewithal come to this vault to die and lie with juliet where be these enemies capulet montague see what a scourge is laid upon your hate that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love and i for winking at your discords too have lost a brace of kinsmen all are punished so he says, yes, the letter agrees. You know, Romeo admits that um, uh, he bought poison off a poor medicine man and came here to die next to Juliet. Where's Capulet and Montague? Can you see what evil results from your hate for each other? Your joys, your children are killed by love. And because I didn't take it seriously enough, I've lost family too. Everyone is punished. And then Capulet says, oh, brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure. For no more can I demand. So in other words, Brother Montague, this is Juliet's dowry, I can ask no more. And Montague says, but I can give thee more, for I will raise her statue in pure gold. 
that while Verona by that name is known, there shall be no there shall no figure at such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. So he's saying I'm gonna have a, a big gold statue made of Juliet to honour her. And Capulet says, As rich shall Romeo's by his ladies lie, poor sacrifices of our enmity. So he says, Well I'll make an equally amazing statue of Juliet. And there they were a poor sacrifice for our rivalry. The prince finishes the play by saying, A glooming peace this morning with it brings, the sun for sorrow with, will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things, some shall be pardoned and some punished, for never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. So the prince says, This is really sad, the sun's too sad to rise, come with me, we'll talk more of this, some will be let off, others punished. There never was such a sad story of this of Romeo and Juliet.